Instagram posts. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, y'all, I ain't okay. My bad. But I'll get through some way, somehow. And I think the first post I made, which it was one of those posts where it was like, because this was the first time I had outwardly admitted to just the suffrage I've been going through up to this point. Um, and it was one of those posts where you post and it was like, oh my God, what did I just do? Oh my God, I can't even look at this no more. I can't, I won't. I'm not going to delete it, but I'm not going, I can't. I just don't have the mental fortitude. I don't have the mental bandwidth to even look at that. Like, cause not me snitching on myself. That was insane. <laughs> And so I probably went back maybe a week later or something like that. And the level of support from that post. And I'm sorry. Oh, it's just, it just takes me back to a space. But like, I just had way more support than I, that even I felt like I deserved. And that was just really, really, um, it is. I'm not going to say it was, because again, I didn't feel it or see it at the time. But just now, in hindsight, it's just, it's really telling of just where I was, the mental space that I was in. Because I just, I just didn't feel deserving. I didn't feel worthy of anything. Like, but it was also what I needed to. You know, and that was like, that let me, that was the start of something. A switch being turned off in my head, let me know that, um, you know, I, I was loved, um, by others, even though I couldn't look at myself in that capacity, you know, um, and at some point, you kind of got to do what you got to do. So I did rely on the love of others. My face. Speak. What would you say is the process of a good workout? Like, what do you look out for from a good workout? Um, you know, it depends. Obviously, it depends on the day because every day ain't 100%. You know, sometimes I only got 40 to give. Sometimes I only got 80 to give. Sometimes I got 110 to give. You know, it just really depends on the day, but it's really just about being kind to myself, you know, um, and knowing that I'm giving the best at what I have in that moment. And, you know, just, it's all compounding interest. You know, it all adds up and just doing it anyway, in spite of. What got you into fitness? Was it mental health or was it just the journey of the body? No, it was very much mental health. Okay. You're gonna get into it. You <laughs> tell me more. Um, so for a very long time, especially you know, just coming from like humble beginnings and stuff like that, um, for me, chasing the bag has always been a goal. It's always been a motive. It's always been a motivating factor, and you know that has led me to some spaces that just were unfulfilling mentally. Like, uh, I ended up going into real estate and I was a realtor for six, seven years. Uh, and this was after, you know, being in corporate, like for my entire adult life, um, which led me to, like I said, real estate, to, I got to make some more money. Um, and I put a lot of my value and my own self-worth into, you know, the money that I was making. But what I learned from like corporate America kind of like shifted over into 
uh, that space, that entrepreneurial space. And so now I'm cold switching and paying faces in front of everybody. I'm trying to make the sale, always be selling for everybody, you know. And, you know, D.C., it's kind of pretentious, you know. Oh, what do you do? You know what I'm saying? And I very much fell into that rabbit hole. Um, and, you know, I was in, I found myself in a relationship at the time. That he, We ended up breaking up during COVID. Um, and that, in my head, you know, just kind of like trying to like be the Joneses, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just, it broke me. You know, and it broke me in sense because that was the closest thing in my head. He was also in the real estate. I was in the real estate. I'm getting money. He getting money. And it was just like, you know, this is the closest thing to Jay-Z and Beyonce. You know, I'm like, we about to be that. But, you know, it was really for everybody else. It was never that. It was like, this going to look like that for everybody else. And when that dream didn't sell, it did kind of break me. You know, I was older. I was, you know, 32 at the time. It, you know, no man, no kids didn't hit the same as it did at 25. And I was just, COVID was happening. It was just a lot of moving factors. And so, um, yeah, it was just one of those things that kind of like catapulted me into a deep, dark depression. Um, Cause now it's like, well, what am I, who am I? If I'm not all of these things and I'm unfulfilled in this, you know, I was too, prideful at the time to go work for somebody else but I was too depressed to continue on in my own business um which also you know just made me feel really incompetent and just like yeah just incompetent um so I started to lose a lot of weight um I started to I, I thought in my head, because I know about depression. I know depression is a thing, but I just didn't think it was a thing for me, you know. Um, so I started to lose a lot of weight, and I'm a Google doctor, so I definitely went on Google, and I'm like, what is going on with me? And, of course, Google told me I had cancer because I lost all this weight. Went from, like, 150 to, like, 114, which I had not been since probably grade school. Um, so I'm like, oh, my God, go to the doctor. Let them confirm what Google told me. Was and so quick? Yeah, it was. And honestly, other people saw it before I did. Because I was still trying to fake the funk. You know what I'm saying? But then people was like, they're okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And then I started to kind of like look at myself. You're not going to see it now. Okay. Because it's faceless. Okay. So niggas don't need to know who you are. Okay. I'll edit this part out. I got you just. Okay. Keep All right. <laughs> so it was just like, you know, yeah, girl. Um, I mean, then I started to look at my own self. And. I'm like, you know what, maybe they own something. Maybe I am looking a little a little thin, you know, I'm starting to see my collarbone a little more, you know, intense and stuff like that. And I was just like, all right, you know, so that's when I started to like really um, just trying to get some clarity. So I went to the um, doctor, I made a doctor's appointment. I, uh, told them I think I'm going to get checked out and you know I'm losing a lot of weight and you know they were asking me what was going on I'm like I don't know you know I mean not even paying attention to the fact that I really wasn't eating like that but I, I just that just wasn't real at that time you know um so I'm just like yeah I, I think I might be turning with the ill I just want to run some tests so they ran some tests nothing popped up um and then they just gave me like a paper questionnaire and I was just like, okay, you know, and like, I did, you know, everything on the questionnaire. And then it was just like, yeah, it just, it looks like you have depression and anxiety, you know, and it was like, okay. But it was actually a breath of fresh air because one, I wasn't terminally ill. Um, and it gave me somewhere to start, you know. So I went back to Google and I'm like, yo, what do I do about this? <laughs> and they were like, go to the gym. <laughs> So I was just like, all right, let's see how this goes, you know. Um, and it seemed like maybe for about a year, um, I would go to the gym. And, you know, I didn't necessarily know what I was doing per se, but, you know, I was still in there doing something. And it was after my gym session, even if it was for five minutes, 
I had just a little sense of like accomplishment, you know, and it was that sense of like happy and accomplishment that I started to chase, you know, and it would literally be for like, I would go home and lay back in fetal position, you know, it's like, but just for five minutes after my workout, it was like, all right, you're doing something, you accomplish something for the day, you know, so I started to chase that, um, and, you know, it just, it started to become a thing, and it still took about a year you know, I mean, I was laying in fetal position. I went through all of my savings. I ended up having to sell my condo. I mean, I lost a lot, you know, in the process. Um, Cause again, I was just too prideful to go work for somebody else. And I, but I couldn't, you know, I, I just couldn't do what was required of me to sustain otherwise, you know? Um, and then it just got to a point where it was just like, all right, Brittany, you need to live. And unfortunately you need money to do that. Um, and going to the gym was the only thing I could do. So I was just like, all right, I need to figure out how to build a life around this because it literally was the only thing I could do. I couldn't do anything else. Um, so then I went, you know, into personal training. And for me, you know, it has just one, I mean, the money ain't the same, let's be clear, but I'm so much more fulfilled. Um, it's the best way that I feel like I can be of service to God, um, to be able to learn or to teach what I've learned along the way, um, to be able to connect with, cause I have a lot of women clients, you know, in a very vulnerable space. Cause a lot of times that's where we find ourselves in the gym in that really vulnerable space. Um, and let them know that they're not alone. Cause they're not, you know, I don't feel like my story is unique you know, having dealt with so many women, um, but, you know, it's just, that's my story, you know what I'm saying? Um, and yeah, it just, it's just so much bigger than just lifting weights for me, you know? Um, so yeah, that's kind of just what fitness is to me. It is my life. It, I feel like saved my life. Um, I don't know who I would be, where I would be. I've never had this level of accomplishment, felt this level of accomplishment in my life, you know. Um, I never felt like I could be of service. I've never felt like I moved in purpose, like it was always for a dollar, you know. It's like, where can I get the most money? How can I, you know, get more money? But like, fitness has just, shown me to myself and it has just been a healing um space for me um and just the healing space for others and just being able to kind of like nurture in that way it's just it's really rewarding for me for me you know so yeah what does support look like for someone like you that's come out of so much mm, support really looks like Love and kindness. Um, I'm you can wipe off the table. Okay. I don't have any of that to fall on your ah, lap. Yeah. I'll fetch you out of okay. the other shoe. Because you chill it out. Well, she really be cleaning shoes. <laughs> <clears throat> she in her bag with it. Thank you. No problem. But, um, also, this is how cool everything looks. I'm saying, I'm saying. I want you to see how dope this looks. Well, yeah, what does support work like for somebody like you? Um, just being gentle and kindness. Honestly, I receive love the way that I give it, you know, and I like to always lead with love. I feel like, again, as a highly anxious individual, a lot of times, it ain't nothing that you can tell me that I ain't probably told myself a uh, hundred million times. So it's just like, I really just try to be in and, and I feel like the same with others, you know, like I say, I don't feel like my story is unique. The more women that I speak to, the more I realize that I'm not alone, you know? Um, and so we tend to be hard on ourselves 
for you know one reason or another um this is like i mean the environment that we're in you know it's just everything is just like moving at such a quick pace fast pace you know hustle work you got to take care of your you got to you got to work out you got to make sure you get whole foods you got to make sure that you take care of yourself and take the trips then you got to make sure you got the job then you got to make sure it's just so much you got then you just ugh, you got to have it all and it's just like oh my god uh, you know <laughs> house <sweaty. laughs> but um <laughs> you got to <laughs> but um you know it's like i think that just blue gentle with me i don't i i think that's that is what support looks like like for me if i'm going through a really tough time it's really easy for me to shut down you know um and if i don't feel like i have a safe space or i might have a safe space and i might not utilize that space but you know i have you know some people that's just like you know they might reach out and be like hey you know i ain't heard from you you don't have to respond. I just want you to know I love you. Like, I'm much rather, I'm, I'm much more receptive to that kind of love and support as opposed to somebody that's just like, you know what? I, I can't, why, why I ain't heard from you? You know, and just beating me up for what I may be going through. And I get it. You know, everybody has their own experiences and maybe that's the trauma. I mean, people have abandonment issues, all type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's really just trying to, we all trying to figure it out. Um, but yeah, for support for me, I you, I tend to lead with love and kindness. It's easy for me to do. Um, it's I'm very empathetic. Um, it's my greatest strength and my greatest weakness. Um, and so, you know, like versus like, you know, so it's like I tend to lean towards people that are more empathetic and just can just be kind and gentle with me like I'm just a girl <laughs> <laughs> but yeah definitely support from others community What does it mean to be of service? Um, everything. I think that is why I am here, why we are here. Um, you know, um, like I said earlier, the goal before has always been to chase a bag and the more money I got did not necessarily equate to more happiness. Um, I mean, not to say you can't, you know, be happy and have money, but, you know, I think that the purpose has to be there. Um, that, yeah, it just didn't work any other way for me. But um, I think I'm here to live for others, if I'm being honest, um, to give back. You know, those are the things that bring me joy, you know, um, being able to help, being able to just be supportive of others. Um, I feel it, it like the intrinsic value of that 
if I or none. Um, yeah, that's just when I'm happiest. It's when I feel like I can be a support to others in a way that's fulfilling for me, you know, as well. So I would say that's what service means to me. It's just everything. That's why I'm here. What are three things you've learned on your service journey? One, I'm not alone. Uh, I think for the longest time, I prided myself on being the strong friend. Uh -huh. And that came at a major cost. But it was just one, feeling very alone. Um, and in learning to be more vulnerable, um, I've been able to connect more. Like I, I realize I'm not alone. Uh, We're literally all trying to figure it out. Like some people might have it together financially and maybe don't have it together in their love life. Some people might have it together in their love life and they might not have it together in just other ways, you know, and stuff like that. Like we're all trying to figure life out and that is, you know, life. Like life is gonna life for us all. And none of us getting out this sucker unscathed, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and that comes with tests, that comes with, you know, just a lot of things. But I would say that in the less that I have had materialistically and the more that I have relied and just being vulnerable and just being real with myself and in turn and being real with myself and real with others, I have gained more quality relationships than than ever before that I value and I'll probably have like for a lifetime. Um so yeah, definitely just a just a more sound community behind me you know rallying behind me rallying together i don't even want to just say behind me because we rally behind each other for real for real but um you know yeah community for sure um and just not feeling like i'm i'm forced to live in the matrix i mean i'm like i can be real and it's okay. Like, I'm not the only one going through to get to. And it's okay not to be strong all the time. It's, it's okay. It's okay to not be okay. You know, um, identify with it, sit in it for a moment, you know, do the shadow work and just move forward the best way you know how you know whether that be with therapy or you know there's there's so many resources so you know being with loved ones with your community stuff like that um working out it doesn't need to have to be working out like i um like to roller skate you know there's a lot of things you know getting into but you definitely you definitely have to do that inner work you know to get there but um which is something that I ran from for a long time, unbeknownst to me. But, you know, yeah, and that's what I got. <laughs> when you realized you were running away from the inner work. I think I'm done with these shoes. Just, just keep scrolling. Just keep scrolling, okay. <laughs> when you realize you were running away from the shadow work. Mm -hmm. What were the signs you were avoiding the work? Um, I was just living my life for others. I mean, I was doing the, you know, going out on Saturdays, hookah, 
Sunday, if we go on Fridays, brunch on Sundays, and nothing else to do brunch. But you know, in the same capacity, I mean, it was just, I was, I feel like I was just caught in the matrix. I wasn't having those internal conversations with myself. I was just, uh, what I like to call just busy with busy work. You know what I'm saying? Um, just trying to play the game, do the, I mean, yeah, just play the game, but really just being stuck in the rat race for real, for real. I mean, I don't think there was really no other sense of accomplishment, internal accomplishment, you know, but I was just seeking external validation, you know, like on the gram, posting in all these different countries because I was traveling a lot more and stuff like that. So it's just like, you know, feeling like I needed to you know, oh, Brittany, you here, you there? Oh, girl, wow, that's amazing, you know. And then, like I said, coming from, like, humble beginnings, I got, you know, people that I know that literally at the time would live vicariously through me, you know, and it's just like, and so now I'm putting that on my back, which that ain't my job, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, all right, well, I got to keep up. And it's like, keep up with who? Keep up with what? Keep up, you know, so it's just like busy work, you know. I think I was just focused on the wrong things, and then... I feel like I was forced to do the shadow work because, you know, in hindsight, you don't know what you don't know, you know, and I didn't necessarily know that I was running from the shadow work. I didn't know there was any shadow work to be done and any shadow work that did need to be done, I thought I had done it. I mean, you know, it just, I had a role to play, you know, um, and then it wasn't until like, I mean, I literally was immobile. Like, I had to, I spent so much time by myself that I had to start having other conversations with myself. I had to seek help. I had to. Like, it wasn't, I didn't have the luxury of, you know, I think something's wrong with me. I should probably, like, I had to seek help. Uh, you know, yeah, so, but, again, just in hindsight, having done a lot of the shadow work, and I don't think, now that I'm here, you know, and I've done a lot of work, more work than I ever have, I realize there's always work to do, you know, but having done a lot of the work already, um, I just, I realized I, I, I didn't know, I just, I did not, you know. Um, so I'm glad that I was forced here. And life had a funny way of doing it. Like, if you don't get it in check, it'll it, 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 it get it. You know, it, it'll get you in check. So, you know, I just, I was forced to get in check, you know. So um, here we are, you know. And now I'm always having those internal conversations with myself and I'm, always you know like even when I do feel like shutting down sometimes and sometimes I still might but there's always gonna be a select few that I allow in just so I don't fall completely or just to let people know what's going on and stuff like that you know but um yeah it's it's still an ongoing battle but I'm a lot more self-aware I'm a lot more self-aware Wait. What are the name of these shoes? These are Air Max 97s. Are these shoes your everyday sneakers? They are actually. They are. You up here. Why did you make these shoes your everyday sneakers? Um, comfort, um, they go with a lot of things, primarily comfort, but they go with a lot of things, but then they still offer a little bit of pizzazz with the pink and yellow, you know, just look cute, look cutesy, we're in the mirror, we're in cutesy. <laughs> What do you expect of your everyday shoe? Comfort, 
comfort, comfort, comfort. And I don't, um, I mean, I'm at this big age. I'm not trying to really, like, I need comfort and cute, okay? I don't feel like I have to wager one for the other. I'm not going to, all right? So that's what I need, comfort and, and, and cute. What do you think about how you treat your everyday sneaker? How would you say you treat yourself in comparison to your everyday shoe? Um, it's an ongoing battle. Like I said, like it's some days I win the battle and some days I don't. I will tell you that I, being more self-aware, you know, I'm, I definitely win the battle more often than not um, because I do understand and realize my triggers a lot more. Um, obviously, something that I had not vested in a long time ago, which I is a non-negotiable now, is definitely, you know, therapy, you know. Um, and even with therapy, like, sometimes I'm in the battle, sometimes my therapist, she give me homework. And then next week, she'll be like, you know, how did they go? You know, like, sure, I had to shelf that. You know what I'm saying? But let's try again this week. You know, or, I, you know, I have internal battles, and I'll talk to God. And I'll, I might have lost, I might have lost this battle. Then, like, you know what? I lost that one, but let's we'll try again next time, you know? Um, so, but I, I, I do, I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of myself and how far I've come. Um, and it is an everyday intentional effort to be better um, and to treat myself better um, and to be, you know, comfortable with myself in all capacities. Like I didn't use the beast. I wasn't comfortable being vulnerable years ago. Like now I'm, it's still kind of uncomfortable, but I do it anyway. I do the hard thing anyway. The more times you do it, I don't want to say the easier it gets, but the easier it is to manage. Yeah, the easier it is to manage. Almost like lifting weight. Like, again, um, you know, 100 pounds is forever 100 pounds, but the more you lift 100 pounds, it's like, all right, well, it's just easier to manage, you know. So um, I don't like to think that I... And pretty comfortable with myself um good bad and indifferent and you know it's very much i'm gonna always give qc so comfort and qc i like it i think um i think i do put it well in that capacity <laughs> oh and difficult has it been to make space for who you are now early on in your journey? Extremely. Um, it was probably the hardest task to date in my life um, because I had to shed myself of who I was. Um, I would say something that made it easier because what I started to do, because my higher self knew, which it, again, it was just a constant battle, but my higher self, somewhere in me, I knew that, you know, this was a journey I had to go through. I didn't want to, and I was trying to fight it every chance I got, but somewhere in me, I knew that there would be a silver lining somewhere. Um, and I don't even know, like, like again, this is maybe in hindsight looking back just at my actions and the things that I did, but very much while I was in it, it was very, it was just tough. You know, it was hard. It was just tough. But I remember feeling like I needed to let everybody know, you know, like, I'm hurting right now. Uh, I'm not my best self right now. I'm going to, um. And so I did, and, and, you know, people would reach out to me. And again, this was at a moment where I had shut down from the world. So nobody really had access to me. Um, 
I mean, not even my parents. And my parents are like my best friends. Um, and I think I just made an Instagram post. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, y'all, I ain't okay. My bad. But I get through some way, somehow. And I think the first post I made, which it was one of those posts where it was like, because this was the first time I had outwardly admitted to just the suffrage I've been going through up to this point. Um, and it was one of those posts where you post and it was like, oh my God, what did I just do? Oh my God, I can't even look at this no more. I can't, I won't. I'm not going to delete it, but I'm not going to, I can't. I just don't have the mental fortitude. I don't have the mental bandwidth to even look at that. Like, cause not me snitching on myself. That was insane. <laughs> And so, I probably went back maybe a week later or something like that. And the level of support from that post. And I'm sorry. Oh, it's just, it just takes me back to a space. But, like, I just had way more support than I, that even I felt like I deserved. And that was just really, really, um, it is. I'm not going to say it was because, again, I didn't feel it or see it at the time. But just now, in hindsight, it's just it's really telling of uh, just where I was, the mental space that I was in. Because I just, I just didn't feel deserving. I didn't feel worthy of anything. Like, but it was also what I needed to. You know, and that was like, that let me, that was the start of something. A switch being turned off in my head let me know that, um, you know, I, I was loved, um, by others, even though I couldn't look at myself in that capacity, you know, um, and at some point, you kind of got to do what you got to do. So I did rely on the love of others to catapult me to a space where I could then take control and or get some control and, you know, start to learn to love on myself. So, you know, one of the, and it was just small things like, that's one of the reasons I locked my hair, you know what I'm saying? Um, I stopped getting my nails done. I stopped getting my lashes done because I wanted to I stopped using filters on Instagram and it was just like not that I have anything against any of that you know what I'm saying I'll still do it every now and again but it's like I just needed to release the layers I needed to stop high and behind any and every thing I could I needed to know who I was I needed to love who I was and that was just no easy feat. Like it just, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, but I knew that it had to get done. And like, in hindsight, I'm gonna keep saying that because I really didn't, you really just don't know when you in it. I didn't know when I was in it, but like, I realized I had been fighting all along. I just didn't know it. It didn't feel like it because it wasn't moving fast enough for me. I wasn't who I felt, thought I should be at that time, but like now, it's just like, it's, I just want to hug her, <laughs> like, oh, boo -boo. <laughs> you know, like, you really, you really put one foot in front of the other. You know, because that's literally what it took. I, it wasn't, I couldn't take a flight. I couldn't catch a bus. I couldn't. I had to walk. <laughs> I had to crawl. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. So it was hard in the beginning. It was. It was. It's no other word but hard. But would I regret it? No. Um, I always, again, just reference my journey to like the Matrix. Like it's red pill, blue pill. You know what I'm saying? It's like. I could have been living in oblivion and hiding behind the alcohol, hiding behind the hookah, hiding behind the, you know what I'm saying? And 
probably been happy or maybe not intrinsically but on the outside you know what I'm saying like I, I tell people I never I, I, I was happiest when I was in Delulu land <laughs> um, but I'd rather live in truth um, and I realized that happiness is a choice you know what I'm saying all of that stuff was just I was just hiding something, you know, so it's like, you happy in the moment, but, you know, those shot always come back, they come back, <laughs> they always come back, you know, so, you're gonna have to deal with them, I mean, or not, then they just be there, you know what I'm saying, I'm just like, yeah, nah, like, you still don't go out check, you know, so, yeah, but it was, it was hard, but I'm glad I did it, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I'm doing it. <clears throat> when it comes to that amount of work, how do you go about facing yourself? Um, that is a really good question. Honestly, it is it is less about pacing myself and more just about being kind with myself because I can only do what I can do you know what I'm saying and I'm human I'm flawed I'm all of those things so it really is just about being kind to myself I still fall in loops where you know I get in my head and it's just like oh damn I didn't get that one or you know it's just like where I may feel inferior or unaccomplished and stuff like that, but then I always use my past as something to reflect on um, and choose to be okay in that. So like, now, am I where I wanna be? No. Um, you know, like, but am I where I need to be? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and I know that that's a very real and different, those are two very different things, you know, but they are both very real as well. Um, but as long as I can be kind and just keep putting one foot in front of the other, I know that I will make strides and I know I will make strides because of the strides that I have already made up until now. I don't have to see it right away. I'll I, I give it another year and we'll reflect back, you know what I'm saying? But I just need to put one foot in front of the other and that is my only job. Um, as a matter of fact, I, my therapist once telling me, my first therapist, <laughs> said you got one job. Your only job is to stay alive. Everything else will come to pass. And I didn't want to hear that at the time. Like, I did not at all. Like, oh, I didn't want to hear that. <laughs> um, but she couldn't have been more right. You know, um, everything has come to pass. And there's still stuff on the plate. New stuff, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like... Two years ago, this is a space that I wanted, like mentally wanted to be in, you know, um, and now I'm here and it's like, I can tackle the new stuff. It's just like, all right, come on with it, you know? Um, but yeah, I just do what I can do. I, that's, that's it, you know? Um, I do try my best, uh, most times, not all the time. And I just, One foot in front of the other. One foot in front of the other. If I don't do well, it was a fire all right, and I didn't do it that time, then just try again next time and just that's the name of the game. This is why I let you brush your arm in there. So so you know you just just leave doing what you're doing over there. <laughs> Did you need this anymore? I was holding this. No, I'm just going to keep it warm. I think I'm good. I got some cocoa. I'm a genie. I'm it and stuff. <laughs> Toasty. I run hot, so, you know. No, I'm good. Walk in toaster.
What's one piece of advice you'd give to someone that has to just make it to tomorrow? What I just told you, um, you got one job, and I've used this advice several times. Like it, it's almost as grand as like Nike got the best slogan. Just do it. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like stay alive. That's it. Everything else will come to pass. Like. You will figure it out. It, it'll get done. You know, just stay alive. I think. How would you say you thought about cheating yourself since this transformation? Um, I have good and bad days, but I think that the constant takeaway is really just being kind to myself on both the good and the bad days um that is just really pivotal for me um and also just relying on my community um um being able to like being able to like just have somebody to call and they can pour into me oh, and, and, and I always ask if it's okay to vent you know um, I feel like that's super super important but you know um, <clears throat> just always having available resources to vent even when I don't want to because like I said my first instinct is to just shut everybody out but it's like knowing that about myself Again, it's a very intentional effort to do the other thing. And after it's done, I never regret doing it, you know. Um, you know, and it might even be just having a friend come over or we just sitting in peace. You know, I'll say nothing to each other. Might watch some TV, maybe not, and listen to some music. I don't know, you know, but it's just being really intentional with myself and my feelings and being kind to myself and but being able to identify with what I'm feeling um, and what's necessary for me to move forward. Um, and sometimes, I keep saying community, and community is great, but sometimes I do need a minute by myself too. I want to be clear about that too. <laughs> You know, sometimes I may need a minute by myself. Um, community can be a bit much. Yeah, community can be much sometimes. Or sometimes I'm just a bit much. Like, I just need a minute, you know what I'm saying? I need a minute to just, I need a minute. But I, I know I can't be there forever, you know. Um, and so I'm intentional with, like, checking in with myself. And, you know, how are we feeling? Why are we feeling? What do we need to do to get out of this feeling or out of this space? Um, you know, so yeah, I had to do things. And Barney has been very therapeutic for me. Um, um, just being able to have, you know, that. I mean, there's a lot of different therapies I have, but I've been very committed in finding healthy therapies, um, especially because I do have an addictive personality. Like usually once I got my mind set on something, I'ma just go full force, like I'm going, you know what I'm saying? So if it's a money move, I'ma go full first. I mean, I'm I usually, and not to toot my own horn, but I, w I usually excel at anything I put my mind to, you know? So with, I mean, and it used to be, I used to put my mind to the model. You know, I used to put my, I used to, smoke a lot of weed. I used to, I mean, I've had a lot of addictions in my life, you know, um, 
And so I've just kind of been trying to actively, not trying, I've been actively, proactively replacing some of those poor habits with good ones. So it's like, now I'm addicted to the gym. Now I'm addicted to running. Now I'm addicted to my mental health and, you know, being in the best mental space I can every, which is an everyday effort, you know, but all of those things take time. And, you know, the more I go to the gym, the more I'm just like, uh, I don't think I want to drink that much because that's going to mess up the work I've been putting in. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm really mindful about when I go out to drink, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, what I'm going to eat and stuff. It's like, uh, I've been doing too much. It's like, all right, let me cook at home, you know, this, you know, today and so, so on and so forth, you know, but, um, yeah, it's really just being intentional with myself and just staying fast and trying to create good habits for myself that, um, offer me, you know, peace of mind. Yeah. What does it mean to have something that's therapeutic? For example, write it. Man, running, running is a new love. I don't even know where that came from. Well, again, it started like I probably started running this past summer and I just went right into it. And yeah, um, running. But running has also been years in the making. Again, in hindsight, I see that now because for years it was like, no, I never run. Y'all, y'all, y'all are crazy runners. How? What is that? I can't even. Absolutely not. <laughs> you know, and that was years. You know, years of me saying that. And um, but you know, now that I'm here, I, I figured it was something that I kind of just wanted to try uh get into with all these like run clubs and like my main goal was just i wanted a 5k distance to not feel like death so i was like all right well i guess if i run more then maybe it won't <laughs> and with all these little run clubs and stuff i was just like it'd be a good way to just kind of like get out catch some vibes and be healthy too you know so um but then i got out of that and i've been finding more it's been more therapeutic running on my own because it's just me and my thoughts, you know, and then, and for, you know, long distance, it's so I get to kind of like sit in those for a minute. I feel like with lifting, even though it can be therapeutic, it is therapeutic as well. It's like, it's a little bit of stop and go. And, you know, it's just like, I don't, I, I'm just not with my thoughts as long, you know? Um, and I kind of enjoy it there. I don't want to stay there too long, you know. So running kind of gives me the a healthy space to kind of like be there for a little bit, but not too long to where you know I'm icing out the world. But um, you know, and then there comes that time when you run it. It can be before or after that run is high. It's just like your body somewhere in your body is just be like, my girl, you need to stop, <laughs> stop. Because, ouch, <laughs> ouch, stop. And then, you know, it's that part of my brain is just like, no, nah, just keep going. Just keep going. As long as you put one foot in front of the other, that's all you got. You might stop. And now, find a, you know, a goal in my head, in my, you know, in my sight. I'm like, I just make it to there. And once you make it to there, if you can keep going, just keep going. And if, until I find a new runner's high, you know, and then, you know, I'll be in that runner's high for as long as I can. But all of those things to me, once the run is done, I mean, they are wins for me. And they do translate into the real world because that's how my mind works in the real world too, you know? Um, like, you know, now I really don't go for that promotion or, you know, because you am, you don't have such and such in your background, so ain't no point, you know. And it's just like, nah, what you saying they can do is say no. Or if you don't get it, you don't get You know, it's just like, well, if you don't try, you know, no. You know, and stuff like that. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's therapeutic in a sense 
that you know it just really just translate into the real world um and then i think on top of that it just sets the tone for the day like it's like even if i have a bad day because i usually start my day with running even if i have a bad day whatever that may constitute i can always go back to my first win so it's just like all right at least i started with a run today at least I started with a run. So, that, I mean, at least I got one win, and I started with it. So, all right, we'll try again tomorrow. And, you know, yeah. So, it helps a lot um, in that capacity for sure. Let me know what you think you've done. Good job. All right, y'all. Catch me on TikTok at Fit and Depressed, and this is a day in my shoes.